how's it going? So I was on midway and I was looking for something to add to my order, make it worthwhile ordering a box of 22 ammo. Anyway, I come across this. It's a snug pack stasher G2 pocket size shelter and emergency bivy. And uh, it says in the one page of instruction that the G2 improves the concept, improves on the concept of the original British military basher. And um, yeah, I'd never heard of a basher, but just seeing the picture that was in uh, that was on Midway and reading the description, this sounds like a hoochie to me. Now it says it's improved over the basher, whatever the hell that is, or the hoochie, um, by being lighter of weight. So I'm gonna quickly test it out and see if it's if it if it measures up to the hoochie. Alright, so first thing first, let's see if the size is about right. So what's right, so this is that uh, Snug Pack G2. And honestly, yeah, it does. It looks just like a hoochie. Physically in size, uh, I can I can definitely feel the difference. It's lighter duty. It feels lighter duty. Maybe it's just as good. So, what is a hoochie? Hoochie was, uh, I think, technically it was called a man half shelter, and it was basically a tarp, um, but it was a tarp that was very versatile and very strong long-lasting and something that you could store in your pocket if you needed to and it was it was meant as an emergency shelter and very maybe the very first thing oh this is looking bigger now this is an old hoochie and I do have somewhere here there it is I did have a mouse chew into it so it's pretty much ruined but one of the first things you could do with a hoochie was like a poncho. So immediately you could have some waterproof shelter. And that's probably the biggest thing is that these are very good quality tarps. They are close to waterproof unless they're very old. And um, hello Jess. So yeah, they, they can keep you very dry. So I'm going to check the let's me check the dimensions first because it looks like this uh, snug pack is actually smaller than a hoochie. In which case, here on useless to me. So there's my snug pack. There's my hoochie. So what makes these better over a just a regular tarp? One, you've got very heavy-duty uh, tie-offs, and you've also got uh, what do you call these things? snap rings. Snap. Anyway, they just push together. And I read this had them as well. Oh, I don't know if you'd be able to see that, but on these corner tie-offs, which are fairly critical, Hoochie. Not only much larger, but uh, feels you know, much heavier duty. So, you know, I'm already feeling this is a lighter duty, a lighter duty version already. All right, so let's see if I can snap these together. All right. Between the hoochie and the snap. And the, um, the G2, um, the snap rings, clips, don't, uh, they're the wrong size, different sizes. So I am not going to be able to immediately clip this in with my Gucci stuff. So physically, are they about the same size? Oh, I'm sorry, this is a little bit windy. 
here. Going down different, uh, I was going down the long axis on the snug pack and the short axis on the twitchy, so twitchy ended up shorter. Terrible in size, they're about the same size. Maybe which you might be a foot longer on the long axis, and we'll see about the short axis. And maybe a foot longer on the short axis. So the hoochie is bigger, uh, just to feel it, feels like it's heavier duty. Uh, let me check the waterproof. So, a hoochie should be very close to waterproof. Let's see if this snug pack is. means, at least for the hoochie, is that now I have literally, I built myself a coracle and I went fishing in Harvey Bay, Australia in a coracle made out of a hoochie, you know, stretched over some um, a wood framework and I, I, I literally had a giant sea turtle come up next to me. I must have looked like an overcurved sea turtle. So, if it's waterproof, This is a snug pack, and yeah, that is pretty close to waterproof. So what that means is uh, you can, yeah, like I just said, I built a boat out of a hoochie. And the other thing that you can do if the material is waterproof is you can build water catchment in a hurry done that on multiple occasions. You need water, which is a good way to catch it. You just set up a basic shelter. You set it up so it collects in a sun. That's butchy. About the same. Well, this is very old, so there is a couple of places where it's starting to leak a bit now, but that's still very close to waterproof. So, water catchment, water storage, that's one of the uses of a hoochie. Uh, might not be what you want, what you would expect, but uh, there is that. Alright, next thing. So, I'm going to get off the snug pack now. It, uh, it, was, it definitely felt lighter. It was a little bit smaller. It did not connect in with the hoochie system. I don't know about the basher system. So, also, it was about a half to a third of the price I would pay for a hoochie. So, yeah, it is, it's, it's cheaper, lighter duty, and um, so it has its place. So let me show you some of the things you can actually do with a hoochie. This one's wet now.
hopefully I'm going to fast forward through all this. There's a lot of setting up, but uh, if you watch my channel, you probably already know about. Get ready to laugh. Pause. See what I've got on video. Yeah, it took me 22 minutes to build that and talk about the beginning, but this is a hammock. So you'll see my intricate system of uh, paracord and uh, anchor points, cross my fingers that it doesn't fall over when I first sit on it. Normally, you'd have a tree anchor here and a tree anchor there, so it shouldn't be a problem. But I'm just trying to demonstrate. Oh, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Just trying to demonstrate the hoochie is a hammock. How that is holding, I do not know. But anyway, it's not the hoochie's fault, it's my anchor point and system and stuff. The hoochie is working very well as a hammock. So, back when I was doing a lot of rock climbing, I was going to take, I was trying to climb Washington's Column in Yosemite, and I brought along a hoochie I really didn't know a lot about big walls at the time, still don't, but uh, I thought this was the most versatile, I had myself a hammock if I needed it, I had myself a shelter if I needed it, and uh, yeah, that's what it is, so that's, that's all I took up with me to do a big wall with somebody time, and that's working. This here is a more typical setup for a hoochie and a hammock system. And I gotta tell you, this is really comfy. Um, yeah, really comfortable. Uh, what it's good for, warm, wet weather conditions. So if I ever need to get off the ground, hello, Blackie, and um, you know, because the ground's wet and I don't want to be sleeping on wet ground, then this is probably the setup. However, in really cold conditions, hammock's not the best thing. Uh, or in wet conditions, although I can, like, with the hammock, you two, bugger off. I can actually fit, I can put another um, hoochie set up into a, like a tent, an A-frame type of setup above this so it should keep me um, fairly dry in the case of a, of a rainfall but anyway that's that's the, um, the the good and the bad good for hot conditions or when the ground's wet um, when it's really cold 
I don't care what type of sleeping bag you have. When it's really cold, I always feel the cold coming up from underneath. There's not much you can do about that. So in that case, you're probably better off sleeping in an insulated ground setup. Knucklehead. So, all right. Um, that gets me to my the next piece I want to demonstrate with the hoochie. And I'll probably use the, the snug pack um, Clayton's hoochie. The uh, third the price um, lighter duty hoochie. Um, so when I first met my wife, we, we went on a, um, like a hike, a, a group hike. It was uh, 14 miles, and I think the person leading the hike got uh, slightly geographically embarrassed. But that didn't matter, because I was prepared. I left most of my military surplus gear behind, because I didn't want to scare anyone. And, but I still brought my hoochie with me uh, because it's lightweight and is very versatile so if it started raining or snowing on us uh, I had some you know a raincoat wouldn't look uh, wouldn't look as trendy as all the other people that were on it but anyway it would do the job and uh, I had emergency shelter but I think the biggest thing I was thinking about at the time and why I brought the hoochie was because of, you know, what happens if someone um, breaks an ankle or sprains an ankle or something or other? I don't want to have to call for a, a helicopter evacuation because someone twisted their ankle. So I carried a hoochie in the thought that, you know, if somebody needed to be evacuated out a certain distance, um, we could use it as a stretcher. Now the hoochie, with enough people, let me see if you can see this on video. Alright, so with enough people, it's just a matter of, you know, grabbing a handful of the hoochie, twisting it up like this. Now, with enough people around the hoochie, you can actually carry a person very effectively right on, uh, like right in the hoochie with no other setup whatsoever. So with four to six people, you just roll it up, grab a hold of it, and you've got a hold of someone, and you can move them a distance to um, get them to medical care. Another thing, hang on, I'm going to try the snug pack for this. Another thing that could be done, actually I'm going to take it out in the sun so you can see it. You may not be able to see this effectively. Alright, so, this is the snug pack, it should work in the same way. Okay. What I'm going to do, you've got these little clips on the end, uh, spring clips, snap clips, I don't even know what they're called. With the hoochie this works, I'm not sure with the snug pack. It should do. No reason for it not to. But you just put them together. Another one. Another one. don't have anyone here with me to help demonstrate this, but once you've got them put together, it's just a matter of sliding a couple of posts through, something that's lightweight and strong. And preferably doesn't put a hole in the wiki. That's my back. Once again, I'm, I'm just trying to demonstrate here because I don't have anyone to help me with this. But what you've got is a 
fairly handy stretcher for two people. So two people, you can have someone in the middle and you can have two people on the outside, a couple of lightweight but strong poles. Oh, you come in and see that. I'm sorry. Let me double see. Double check you can see that. Yeah, you probably couldn't even see that. Anyway, I will talk about it again. So, you've got your hoochie, or in this case a snug pack, and you have got an injured person. And you can actually put them together and you can create a fairly decent ha uh, not hammock stretcher that two people can carry a third in an emergency with something like this. So, um, yeah, that's a setup. Two poles and a uh, snug pack or hoochie clipped together, and you've got yourself a stretcher. I'm sorry, I don't have anyone to help demonstrate that with, but you should get the idea. All right. Pause that for a second. All right, the next thing that the um, Snug Pack G2 is uh, good for, as is an improvised bivy sack. Now, bivy sack is basically a roll out bed and tent all in one but it's going to keep you it's supposed to keep you waterproof and at least you know keep most of the rain out uh, and provide enough insulation from the wind and cold weather that uh, you'll be able to get a good night's sleep so the uh, the snug pack or the hoochie can be set up in this arrangement. Now I'm just, I'm going to lay on the ground right there just to show you how this is set up. Why would you do this? Uh, you don't have, either you've run out of time, you don't have enough time to really set up a, a tent or a lean-to or whatever. Anyway, you just want to get in, get some sleep, ASAP, and um, yeah, this is a good way to do it. I would use something like this now, when we used to go hunting in Australia, a lot of time we used to camp in a, uh, not a grain silo, a um, straw and hay, hay barn. Anyway, I used to camp in a hay barn. And it wasn't too bad in that you had, uh, you know, a fairly soft bed and, you know, it smelled good. Uh, it was a good place to camp. Uh, we couldn't have a fire in there. And... Um, the wind did blow through there. I remember one day that I was freezing. I mean, it was so cold. I think it must have been close to hypothermia. And I just had to... I had to get set up to keep myself warm and try to get some sleep because I think I was close to hypothermia. So, and this is kind of what I used. I used a, a hoochie, wrapped it around me, sleeping bag. I think I even had a space blanket. And all that, wrapped myself up in that, and that was my emergency keep warm because it was really cold and the wind was blowing. So this is an improvised bivy sack using a hoochie, or in this case a snug pack. Alright, so I've got my, I've got my snug pack G2 clipped together. Left over from when I did the um, stretcher demonstration. Make sure they're all clipped together. All right, so it's basically ready to go. Laid out. Got my sleeping bag. Push the sleeping bag inside the putchy. And you may want to, so there's an edge, like this edge here that was clipped together. 
it's got some gaps in it so you might want to put that on the is it leeward anyway the side that the wind's not blowing into all right you put your sleeping bag inside See that you can see that. Yep. All right. So I'm not even going to bother taking my boots off. I slide down into the sleeping bag inside the. Alright, sun to my eyes, this isn't a very good demonstration. Well, I've got a windproof, waterproof, or very close to it, covering over top of my sleeping bag, and that's going to be able to keep me warm when I most need it. And it's, you, you can do it very quickly. Yeah, sun was in my eyes. Anyway, so that's the baby sack. How it's set up for the baby sack. And it, it really works. When I was a kid, before I even owned a horse, I think, uh, I used to bring a an old plastic bag with me camping. And I'd be inside of a light duty sleeping bag. I'd be fully closed and I would pull up in that plastic bag because that's gonna it's, it's not good for the whole night because you start to perspire and you actually get wet inside that that, that booby sack but um, I can get four or five good hours sleep before I was too wet to sleep anymore and that, that was that was definitely worthwhile I don't know why the dogs She's a camper, he's not. Oh, sorry. Who do I hurt? Alright, let's get out of that. Oh. Double check that got caught on video, which I think it did. Perhaps the most common usage of the hoochie, in, in my experience anyway, uh, has been in lean-to formation, you know, just setting up a basic lean-to, because that's going to keep the wind off and maybe a little bit of the rain. Uh, so it's very fast, and you can, you know, have some form of shelter set up very quickly. When I was running around the bush setting up hoochies, um, a lot of the people were using something like that, uh, a bungee cord, stretchy strap, whatever the hell you call them, uh, because they could set up a hoochie very quickly. Personally, I prefer just using some very light uh, cordage like builders, builders twine, like nylon builders twine, or um, uh, oh God, what's the other one? Um, paracord is what everyone's talking about now. But it, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, it just depends what your, your skill level is. I figure if I can use some builder's twine, very cheap, um, very light rope that I can set up very quickly, then I don't need to carry these things. So, all right, so I'm going to set up a lean-to very quickly. And um, I do have in that tree, in this tree, I do already have bungee cords set up just so I wouldn't have to look for them. But uh, I've got a few tent pegs. Actually, I'll put those in my pocket. And I've got my. Throw that there, don't need that. I've got. And this is actually the. Um, what is it? Snug fit? Anyway, the, the Hoochie clone, Hoochie wannabe. Uh, just a little bit smaller than a regular Hoochie. Should be fine for this purpose.
Now with the hoochie, there used to be an inside and an outside. I think it's the same with these. Yeah, you can kind of tell the inside. That's the you know, where most of the, the reinforcing is obvious on the outside. So, all right, that's the outside. That's the side I want facing towards the weather. There's one. Once again, I just, I don't know if you can see that here, but I just hooked it up into the tree using a uh, bungee cord. And then one more back here. I'm going to do the same deal. Bungee cord. Because they are quick. I'm going to come out one corner. winds I have out here, I would definitely want to get it down as far as I can. And then one more. Actually, I'll tell you what, if you could see that. Just let me double check that you can. I think you can. So most of the time when I was camping using hoochies, I wouldn't carry tent pegs. They were more weight and had very little other use apart from setting your tent. So these are some good tent pegs. What I would normally do is just make something real quick out of a piece of wood, sharpen the end. This one here has not only been sharpened, it's been heat treated so something like that and I would just use a rock bang it into the ground that made a pretty good anchor for which all right and you got one two more These things, not eyelets, but you know, supports. One, two. All right, so. if you can see that. I've got the hoochie stretched out. Uh, I could actually fix that corner up if I wanted to. It's not really an issue for me at the moment. Bring the camera up so I can show you inside. Still got my um, hammock sitting there, but now, as well as a hammock, I've got a good, you know, slight amount of rain protection, but a good amount of wind protection. And if you're Australian, uh, sun. Is, is another one that you have to worry about. So, you know, building something like that, I can um, help save the amount of water I'm gonna drink and stuff like that. But, yeah, and this is the way 
I'm going to crawl up here, hopefully not hit the camera. One at a time. That is exactly how these switches would get used. Very simple, very fast. I've got rudimentary shelter to keep the wind, the you know, little bit of rain and the sun off me. And yeah, it's pretty handy. And it can definitely be used in conjunction, although it's not really set up over top of this now, but it can be used in conjunction oh, with the hammock, for sure. And that is very comfortable. All right, so uh, these were called man half shelter. Did that mean that they were not good enough for a full shelter? Or, anyway, I think what they meant is that they were meant to be used with another person. So you were only issued one of these. Not sure what it is now, but I'm sure it's probably the same. Uh, in the Australian military, you were only issued one of these switches. That was your issue. And most of the time, so Australia has very mild conditions compared to where I am now. So most of the time, you would actually probably want to um, hook you up with someone so that uh, you had more room to, you know, just more space. So a lot of times you'd actually join these together, and that's what the clips on the side are for. And uh, um, yeah, it did that a lot, and it made for a much larger shelter and much better protected. So at the moment with the lean-to, all right, that's all I can do with one man half shelter, Hoochie. Um, with the full, you know, when it built the way they can, you know, meant to, you'll actually have two of these coming down and you'll have good protection from two sides at least. And uh, yeah, so that's probably what I'm gonna do next. So that was a lean-to, simple, fast, effective. Oh, I hate getting out of this hammock. It's very comfy. Oh, there goes the camera. There we go. All right. Okay, so, next thing I'm going to do is show you, at least in my experience, this isn't the way I use it mostly, but it's the way most people like you used it mostly. So now I've got two hoochies that are snapped together. Now I couldn't use the Snug Pack G2 in this one because it does not match up with a, a fair Dinkum hoochie. But what I'm going to do is snap all these little clips together, quick necks, uh, snap clips, whatever the hell they're called. I'm going to snap them all together along the long axis of the switchy and uh, I'm going to build a man full shelter. I don't know if that's really a thing, but that's what I'm going to do. Just keep... oh. i got one here that's buggered up. It's actually got an old clip stuck on it. So I think I can just snap that off. There we go. Old clip snapped off. So this is all military surplus stuff. There might be some issues with it. Every second one, it seems like there's two clips for extra support, so I'm using all of them. Consuming part of it is just 
flipping on the dead eye. That's actually pro like that uh, Snug Pack G2. That's probably the most disappointing part is that it did not match up with. Uh, Standard uh, hoochie. It's a little bit smaller. All right, so got that. Take a bit of paracord. I'm going to do it right here. We go through the eyelets. That's the strongest part there. I'm basically going to do a quick clove hitch. Get a stopper knot. Clove hitch. Drop a knot, square knot, and then I'm going to tie that up to the tree. And as I've mentioned before, as much as possible, you want to be able to utilize whatever is already there. So if I've got trees, I'm going to use trees. If I have to set up tent poles, I'll set up tent poles. But uh, that's all I've got at the moment. Uh, that's around the tree. I'm just going to maybe lock it off a bit with this. So the knot's there. Come out. So right now I've got two hoochies clipped together as one. Uh, normally, I would actually have these facing down a little bit more because there's nothing worse than rolling out of your, you know, out of your sleeping bag into your slide into your tent. But just for today's demonstration, I'm going to have it you know, across slope. So hopefully you'll get the idea. All right. Now I want, I need a tent pole. I'm going to use one of these old things with a couple of pieces of. Cord and I need a couple of anchors, a couple of oil um, Throw my tent peg down there. Find my two pieces of See that? I'm having trouble with my camera recently. That's still filming. Good.
Okay, so just to clarify, you can see that. It looks kind of ugly. I would spend a little bit more time tightening up, especially that string on the right. But I'm just trying to give you an idea of what's possible with the hoochie. So I've got my anchor, my other three set up. Also notice the difference between a real fair dink and butchy and the snug pack. I think on the on the snug pack I only had one other tie down eyelet, one of these things. Whereas in the middle I got one, two, three, four in this one. That means you can get a much much better tent setup, much better shelter setup. Only putting them two today, but the option there with a real fair dinkum putty is a lot better. Okay, there you have it. The man half shelter constructed into a man full shelter. Basically, this can sleep two people fairly comfortably. Uh, obviously, it's open at both ends, so if you're in really cold environment, it may not be the best. I did mention that with the hoochie, the real fair income hoochie, I have a lot extra, a lot more tie downs along the bottom in fact I think I said four more so I can make a much stronger structure than I could with the uh, what is it Stasha G2 okay so real hoochie definitely looking like the best bet here shelter uh, also mentioned it already if I was doing this I intended to be sleeping in here I actually would have built it downhill because I'd much rather be lying up and downhill than on the side of a hill and where I will roll and end up in the side of the tent but I just wanted to demonstrate that and I think the only other one I have to demonstrate is the one that I used most of all uh, with these. So that's the single, making a single man shelter out of a hoochie. Uh, yeah, so there's not a lot of room, but it is functional and it'll keep you warmer than what this will. I can feel right now, right now I can feel the wind blowing through, so this is definitely not a, a cold weather environment shelter. Alright. Yep. 
that's it. You're probably having trouble seeing that because I'm having trouble seeing it just with the 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 shade from the trees and the the green color of the hoochie. It uh, yeah makes it hard to see, and that that was the whole one of the ideas anyway was that it is uh, camouflage. So anyway, and I haven't pulled down my hammock yet because it's just so comfortable. So we'll do a quick close these up. Try to get a camera view inside there. All right, let's see how that works. Oh yeah, that's better. Yeah, I did a view from outside, and I don't think it was showing anything inside. So, this is one of the most common configurations for this style of shelter. And I'm going to say everything again. Uh, it, it's good now. It gives you a lot more room. Two people can sleep here quite comfortably. But I do not have any... I felt the wind coming through on this side. I don't have any... You know, depending on the direction you set it up, uh, it can let a lot of wind through. You can feel very cold in one of these shelters. So, but they, they are, you know, in, in nice conditions. They're fairly comfortable and easy to set up. And, uh, yeah, in all a good, uh, a good deal. Um, I could not use the Stasher G2 with one of my other hoochies because it is just a little bit shorter. So it would not clip together. I'm not sure if you can see that, but all these these top sections are all clipped together. And uh, yep, very comfortable. Okay, so this is the last piece of video in my Stasha G2 snug pack shelter video. Now I thought originally it was like a hoochie and it is, it's definitely like a hoochie but it's not a hoochie. Um, it's not as heavy duty, it doesn't have as uh, many tie downs and it doesn't have as much reinforcing on the important areas of the shelter so in, and I haven't bought a hoochie in a long time but it's about a third the cost so that's pretty much what you expect so and what I'm going to do now I'm going to show you how I would normally set up my hoochie if I needed to stay dry and warm in a cold wet environment so uh, and I, to do that, I am not going to use the Snug Pack Stasher G2 because it's, one, I'm getting fat, and it is a little bit smaller, both width and length, than the Hoochie. And I'm getting older and fatter, so, and I could barely fit into this shelter, you know, when I was young. Uh, but this shelter I'm going to show you is the best way with this equipment to remain dry and warm, you know, in difficult environments. So that's what I'm going to show you. Um, yeah, maybe I'll finish up after that. All right, first thing, this piece is the... This is a hoochie that has a little bit of mouse damage. That piece there. I'm not sure if you can see that. Anyway, 
a little bit of mouse damage, but otherwise it's perfectly functional. So I want to find the middle section to the hoochie, which is this piece right here. Alright, I want to find the inside and the outside. What you're looking at now is the inside, so I need to flip that around. And then we go tie it up up here. I'm setting this up as if I would an emergency camp shelter or a so there's one of these pegs don't need to go in all the way for now because I may need to adjust it Again, find the middle, which is that piece. If well, we don't do it this way, but if you need, if it's really cold and wet, you may wish to do it this way. So I got myself a Tent pole. Tie that through there. All right. Same deal with the tent pole. Tie that through there. I'm just using clothes because they're quick and functional. Alright. When I was doing this a lot, I would most normally use this little paracord, I would just use builder's twine. So it was strong enough for this purpose. Strong enough for the purpose. Very cheap. So that's what I got. Got that roughly set up. Start setting out my let me see if it's even recording. Yep. Alright, so once again, put you I'm not going to put in all the
stuff I would normally do. So I'm hammering down on this temp peg. It's functioning. And in truth, that is what I would use. You notice there's a section at the end here that hasn't been hammered down. second one in because that will give me my alright I'm going to go find some more pieces of wood or some temp posts and I'll be right back Okay, so this is almost ready. A few more uh, tent bags to put in. Some wood. Some iron steel. Normally, if I'm going camping, if I need to be light, I'm probably just going to be using wooden fence, no it's not fence, stakes, uh, tent posts, tent stakes. So very crudely, very quickly made, but very functional. So on the top side you need this little flap which I'll put down later but for now it's going to be left open because I need to be able to get into this thing at some point Shelter done. Oh, so the tent peg is coming apart. Right, tent peg just came apart. No big deal. Probably going to pull hard again. Yep, it did. Alright, just for now. Let's see. Hope you can see this. I'm going to produce a tent peg quickly. The way I normally would. So it, it doesn't need much need a bit of a sharp edge to drive into the soil. Hopefully a bit of a blunt edge to actually hammer with, such as this, and just drive it in. Most of the time when I was going camping, I would do exactly this. Uh, reason that was, we 
building a small shelter doesn't need to be a huge amount of anchoring um, I'm traveling light I don't want to have to carry all these tent pegs and all the other stuff that you would normally carry so as much as I can improvise from the environment I will as such and, uh, and that is about ready to go it's low to ground so it's going to have a little bit of wind resistance this back end is down so it's going to provide a certain amount of uh, what's the word um, insulation you know dead air space and if you want you can definitely tie this or anchor it down any way you want And my shelter is ready to go, except, uh, once again, I'm going to take this down. There we go. All right, so I've taken it down. got this like that corner of the tent the hoochie so I can fold that back wherever I need to you see that I don't know if you can see that let's get a bit closer Still don't know, you can see it. Alright, just real quick, I'll be in and out. So I've set up my shelter, it's facing downhill. What I would normally do is like this is very soft, um dirt and pine needles and uh um, juniper, whatever juniper stuff is. Anyway kind of soft so what I would normally do is mound that up into a bed and then I would have my sleeping bag in here all right let's see yeah it's probably not gonna work anyway all right here we go again let me try this this is the final piece of my hoochie demonstration and uh, so here I am lying inside my hoochie. What I would normally do if I was setting up for a night is I would scrape up all the debris, whether that's grass or leaves or in this case uh, um, juniper stuff. Anyway, whatever it is, I would scrape it up into a pile, and that would become my bed. And, um, now I've got dogs coming in wanting to see me. Yeah, Blackie, piss off. Alright, um, so that would be my bed. So th this hoochie arrangement, the single, you know, for a one person, uh, if you're in a cold, wet environment, this is the best way to keep you warm and dry. Uh, the hooch is waterproof. Uh, because it's so small, when, you, you know, when you're in here, it actually holds in a lot of your body heat. So you can stay very warm with a very small sleeping bag. And, and um, So this is ultra lightweight camping. Um, What did I want to say? Yeah, uh, however, because it's so small, you pretty much have to leopard crawl out of it, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. But what I normally do, when I'm getting ready to get out in the morning, 
I will just so that's that's a corner that I left open so I can get in here but when I'm getting ready to get out in the morning everything's wet I will just tear it all down uh, as I'm getting out I don't you know after I've slept had a good sleep I don't care and um, yeah no I, I guess I just have to recap on what hoochies are good for um, obviously they were just a tarp a uh, very good tarp. They're supposed to be waterproof. They're supposed to be interchangeable and connectable, uh, which the, the I believe it's called the Snug Pack, which I started out doing this video on. Snug Pack doesn't really hook in with the Hoochie system. Uh, it's still it's still pretty decent, but uh, it's about a third of the cost, and it does not hook in with the Hoochie system. Um... I don't know what the basher system is, that's British, anyway, the, um, yeah, other uses, uh, I have used them, and I mentioned earlier in the video, I've used them to build a boat, a coracle, went fishing in Harpy Bay, I have used them as a sail, and actually went sailing up in, uh, the Tweed River, um, Lots of adventure there, but um, yeah, there was some talk about an Australian that uh, used two of these things for wings, a bamboo framework, built some form of hang glider. Uh, got about four foot off the ground and the leading edge main wing strut cracked and he twisted his ankle. I know nothing. All right. Um, oh. Yeah, all in all, a very versatile product. Uh, everybody should have a couple of hoochies in there in their kit for emergencies or preparedness uh, I don't know that the I think it's called the Snug Pack G2 that I don't know that I'd buy another one be, simply because it doesn't hook in with the original Hoochie I don't know that it hooks in originally with the what they said in the um, advertisement the British Basher which I don't even know what that is but um, definitely doesn't doesn't hook in with the the hoochie system so it has limited um, use for me but as a as a one-off um, cool tarp it's still good um, and like I said like it's uh, one third the cost one half the cost I'm not sure exactly it's like it's been a long time since I bought a hoochie uh, it's, it's it's a lot cheaper than what I would normally buy so it, it has its uses I guess but Anyway, that's the uh, the hoochie, and can keep you very warm and comfortable in difficult environments. I mean, at the moment now, it's it's getting almost too hot because it's keeping in all the heat. I do have, like I said, this is my old hoochie. You've got a bit of a rat hole, but still, really good setup. Um, yeah, that's about all I can say. Not the most comfortable, but we'll do the job.